Now go. Welcome to Chad's Garage, where today I will be creating a tutorial in Photoshop um, for my students. And it's going to be titled Shattered Photography. And the inspiration behind this project is Star Wars related, obviously. Um, obviously. And obviously. And obviously, I would like to thank my daughter for the set design. She did a fantastic job. My viewers and my students who are watching this, you will be learning about... Um, some photography compositional rules. You will also be learning um, a little bit about Photoshop and how to create shattered photography. I wanted to let you guys know with this shattered photography that uh, the inspiration behind this, uh, uh, this, this assignment that I'm creating for you, these two artists, uh, Pablo Picasso, I'm gonna try to put them right there. And um, another artist is uh, David Hockney, famous photographer. So those are the two artists right there that are inspirational for me. And uh, when developing this project, it's a very snowy day today. Um, it's, holy cow. It's um, a Colorado snowy day today. Uh, I'm just looking at that, holy man. I wanna give a shout out to uh, one of my students. He's a sophomore, Will Ricks. Thank you so much for uh, creating the uh, blender intro for my video today. You're the man. Thank you so much. I just want to go outside and get this done, Ozzy. Why are you filming me? <laughs> Why not? All right, here we go. A T T A T A T. Here you go, Vinny. You're going to take this out? Put that jacket on. I don't have my shoes on yet. Well, hurry up. You were super slow. Yeah, you started filming before I was ready. Yeah, I'm holding that hole. You're holding the dog butt. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Vinny's got it? Okay. No. Oh, God. Got it? Yes. Okay, I'll follow you outside. Now let's go. Let's just find a spot for it. Go straight ahead right there in the driveway. That's it, set it right there. Right there, that'll work. All right, cool. All right. That's a good spot. Good spot, good spot. Shoot. Oh, crap. Oh. Vinny's not going to be happy with me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Vinny is definitely not going to be happy with me. Check it out. He completely fell over. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
try to follow along and pay attention. I'll go as slow as possible. Just remember, you can fast forward at any time and slow down this at any time. Anyway, here we go, you guys. Let's do this. Let's have some fun. All right, here we go. So first we need to set up our Photoshop document. So let's just at this point start to uh, put our name up at the top of the page and you will see it where it says preset details. Put your first and last name there. And where the dimensions say width, let's put 10 in there and make sure it says inches since we'll be printing this. So 10 for the height. And now for the resolution, let's just put it at 200, let's say. Keep the files a little smaller for these cheap computers at the school we have. And the background contents we will make transparent. These are presets and press create when you're ready. All right, now we need to figure out where the tools are. Well, this is the toolbar right here. Let's click on it, move it over. I click those little arrows to make it a little smaller so it's easier to maneuver around. And then I'm going to look for layers and drag it, and then I'm gonna expand it. That way I get to see all my layers. At this point, I need to import one of my first photos and I'm going to click on where is it place embedded I will go to my desktop to find where my photos are and then I will select them and then I'm going to place them I can expand it by dragging the little corners and you're going to see I can create a new layer by clicking on the plus sign and then coming over here and click on Place Embedded again. Let's bring in another one of my ATAT photos. All right, now I have two separate layers here. Um, if you look at the layers over there, you can see them up there. I'm going to grab another, make another layer. And I'm going to bring in another one. And I'm going to continue this process until I get all the main photos that I like into my document. Press place again. There we go. Double click. Now I'm going to name my layers so I know what I have. I'm bringing in three of the photos with three different perspectives of the AT, ATT or whatever it's called. We got the front, side one, and then I'm gonna call the other one side two, just so I have an understanding. I am going to now rasterize all the photos. This means that I'll be able to edit the photos, so I click on rasterize layer. There's also another way to do this, by going to the top of the page and slick, excuse me, selecting layers right there. And then I go down and I can see rasterize and I can do all the layers at once right there. So there's two ways to do it. At this point now, what I'm going to do is uh, press Command T so I can minimize that so I can see all three of my photos. But they are all on three different layers. We are about ready to cut these three photos up into shard looking glass. So pay attention. Um, at this point, I'm moving the layers around and I'm gonna figure out which picture I wanna cut up first. I am going to now attempt to find the polyangular tool, which is underneath the lasso tool, even though I'm running around here. Right there, the polyangular tool. Click on that. And what you're gonna wanna do is make a shard looking cut glass piece and you're gonna click it three times into a nice sharp triangular shape. And then you have to meet it at the end and it should blinky line. And then go edit, copy and edit paste. 
but please remember just doing command C, command V is much quicker. I will click on the eyeballs on my layers so I can see what I have and what I don't have. And that's it's gonna get a little confusing over there, but you know, just just kind of go with it, see what happens, and uh, keep cutting and maneuvering the shapes. Using that move tool and command T, you can also turn the shapes. So I'm gonna be cutting the other photo here in a certain ways. There we go. Click it again, make it go right like that. Command C, Command V, and you see it makes a new layer automatically over there. Click on the eyeballs to see what I have and continue on the process. It gets a little confusing in there, but just keep at it. Trying to cut different parts of the photo that kind of give a good idea of what the photo is and thinking of the space in each one of those shards so I have some positive and negative space going on which will make my design a little more interesting. There we go. Now I'm going to continue this process on and I am going to up the speed here so because this took me a little while to make so um, I'm going to speed it up. Just remember as you're doing this What you want to try to think of it is as a little therapeutic. Um, don't think too much about time and think about, you know, what might be important parts of the photo that you can do. Um, use multiple photo photos at different angles. As you can see here in my mind, I was starting to think about moving those points, kind of having them all go into the same direction. One of my students actually did this style, I believe it was Peyton, and uh, I really like the look of it. I'm right now, I, I painted the background gray, and I just created a new layer for that, and I clicked on the paint brush, brush on the toolbar and added a light gray, because it's neutral. And uh, I uh, thought it would look pretty good with a neutral gray background there. You can pick other colors, but I didn't want the photo to look too busy. That's why I picked the gray. Now, as I try to turn those shards and trying to kind of get them in an interesting look, um, I wanted to kind of uh, just get them all going in the same direction, which was kind of hard. But... Uh, I, used, I started to paint the background with a little darker gray over top of the light gray, creating that nice value. And then what I decided to do was add um, under FX, I started to play with putting uh, drop shadows under each one of the shapes. It's really pretty easy. All you do is click on one of the layers and you click on at the bottom of the layers column is a little word called FX and this pops up and I can play with the distance, the darkness and the opacity of the shadows, which gives each one of those little shapes a, uh, a feeling of uh, like it's hovering over the other shape. And I did this with all of the shapes. And I continued this on for a little bit and just watch. All right, and as we continue on, let me back up a little bit here. I'm gonna bring in one of the other photos and I'm gonna put this as a background image for right now. And then I am going to do something, like it just kinda, I like the background effect of that. I'm going to click on the word normal up there on the layers bar and these do multiple lighting effects. So I'm doing this on that background image right now. 
Vivid Light is pretty neat. Um, pin Light. I think I'm going to stick with Vivid Light right here. And I'll zoom out. And you can kind of see how that background image now has a little effect to it, which I think is pretty cool. And it also is kind of blending through to the light gray background I have. Now I'm going to go over to the word image at the top of the page, and I'm going to click on color balance. Now remember, in color balance, you have three things down at the bottom, mid-tones, highlights, and shadows. And I'm going to increase the blue on some of those layers, give it a wintry kind of feel for this snow day we're having right now. And as I uh, go in there and play around with the, the color balance on each one of those images. You can see that on the left there, that one's kind of changing colors. Just play with it. Use your imagination. Use your artistic abilities. Think of space and how it looks with the colors. Just remember, this is an art piece you're trying to make here. And, you know, not only for your grade, but for your sanity. You're making something cool. Make it cool. Keep playing with the colors till you get it where you think you like it. And for time's sake, I'm going to probably wrap it up here in a little bit. But uh, using color balance is a fun tool to use. And you've seen those on the, my other students' work. They use the color balance tool. And just play with other tools. See what you can do. See what you can make. And... This is why I call, call, call the, the, this is why I call this shattered photography because it looks like the photographs inspired by Pablo Picasso's cubism and inspired by David Hockney's work in the past. Um, I just I just love doing this project. It's a good art project. Hey, if you don't mind, could you guys please like and subscribe the, for, to this uh, channel? I'm really trying to grow it. I know I do some pretty stupid stuff on here, but I got to be honest with you. I really enjoy what I do, and I, I hope I can get better at this process and uh, make some cool videos for the future, um, which will be Photoshop tutorials, Adobe Illustrator tutorials, and many more. Who knows what else, but uh, I really enjoy the process of making these videos. It's relaxing to me, but uh, you guys are all good people. Um, like I said, please give me a subscribe and uh, um, I'll show the finished piece here in the end and uh, we'll see what it looks like. All right, you guys, thanks a lot. And I hope you uh, have a little fun making this stuff and uh, look forward to seeing your final work. Please comment down below if there's anything uh, you would like me to make in the future. Thanks a lot. Chad's Garage, out. <laughs> Da 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 da